Welcome brothers and sisters to our Lenten journey with the saints. Day 33. Saint John Chrysostom will guide us today. He says, It is not enough to remove an arrow from the body, but in addition to that, it is needed to heal the wound caused by the arrow. Similarly, in our souls, after receiving the forgiveness of sins, by the means of penance, it's necessary to heal that wound. St. John Chrysostom, clearly from his day, makes a reference that when a person got wounded with an arrow, once you remove it, it seems half of the problem is taken care of. But the wound is bleeding and we cannot leave a person like that. So what happens? Now he actually transposes this image to the spiritual reality. We confess our sins. Yesterday I spoke about that just going to confession for the sake of going, it's not good enough. We need to unpack the gift. Well, we are wounded by the sin and we also wound others with our sins, with our tongue, with our behavior, with our negligence. Many different things can happen. It is not just enough to go to a quick confession, get ourselves washed, no one has seen anything, and secretly, unnoticed by anyone, go back into our ordinary life as if everything had been normal sort of like a little disturbance in the normal course of the day. Let me tell you, I already have seen in many years of uh, confessing different people that on few occasions it happened, a person came to confess and shortly after fell in the this, this same or even worse or more complex since and couldn't understand why. But wait a minute, didn't I just go to confession and I had the right spirit? That is what I thought. And now this big surprise, now we can refer to St. John Chrysostom's words. The arrow was removed, the sin was pulled out, the sacramental grace of forgiveness descended, but maybe the wound was bleeding and bleeding and bleeding even more. Basically, we did not go over the healing process by the proper satisfaction, the spirit of repentance, of doing penance for our sins. Don't you think that when we look carefully at our lives, how we go about the sacrament of reconciliation, we are just very smooth, just the least of resistance. Okay, God forgave me, I'm fine, I'm good, no matter what I've committed. It's everything okay now. No, it's not okay. If we have not repented, if we have not done the ways, different deeds of satisfaction, our repentance or our way of uh, receiving God's forgiveness, it's uh, insatisfactory. It's rather poor in the sense, if I may use this language. Now you can understand why Saint John Vianney, the prisoner of the confessional, who would be confessing up to 16 hours a day and the whole France was flocking to his confessional and many sinners would be coming out transformed and changed, this great confessor would say that many confessions remain fruitless. What? Because there was no spirit of repentant heart. So basically the arrow was removed but the wound was bleeding. How to heal that wound? How to make sure that we don't bleed to death? That we are not falling into the same sins, particularly when it comes to 
mortal sins, heavy sins, those that hurt us, the relationship with other people that we're really affected. And uh, it seems that you can bring into your uh, imagination a question of uh, habitual sins that have to do with uh, substance abuses. Let's say an alcoholic can go to confession and ask God for forgiveness, but a few minutes later, when he has an occasion with his friends, he would not even blink his eye of thinking twice, but he would jump straight into a drinking party. But it's not because he did not ask for forgiveness a few minutes earlier during the confession, but because he is damaged, the wound is bleeding. I'm trying to use these images to help us understand about the importance of the healing of the wound upon removal of the arrow. What about the relationships? Sometimes we might have had a big fight with someone, an argument. Or sometimes major issues happen in a marriage, in a family, in a friendship relationship. So what to do next? Well, I told you already I'm sorry, but wait a minute, did that relationship get healed, there was a process of healing of this conver conversation, of, uh, well, purifying this <laughs> problem that took place there. We cannot just move forward as if nothing happened. Oftentimes, weeks, months, even years are needed to recover from certain sins, especially when the confidence, when love, when mutual um, understanding and confidence have been broken. Now, how to heal? There is a proper repentance. How can you know if you repented from your sin? There is one way of looking at it. If after being visited by a similar temptation, you resist, you don't fall. But the healing needs to be connected with removal of the occasions of sins. So, as I already gave this example, if a person struggles with alcohol and he still has plenty of bottles in his house, or he doesn't avoid the drinking parties because he is not strong enough to say no to his friends, knowing that once he gets there, he would not be able to resist, that's not the healing is never gonna heal. Maybe he even takes the sacrament very superficially, saying, okay, I can still go partying and get drunk, say I'm sorry to my spouse or my uh, relative, and then the following day I'll go for this quick shower to the confessional and be brand new restored. It doesn't work like that. As St. Paul says, if you sow in your flesh, you will reap the fruit of death which means the consequences will be destructive. Today we need to reflect how this relationship is meant to be healed with God, with our neighbor, and also with ourselves. Today's task will be to take St. John Chrysostom's phrase seriously, knowing that once we go to confession and the arrow is removed, now we need to heal the wound. How we are going to go about that? First, starting with a relationship with God. Let us say you confessed, I didn't have enough prayer time. I skip my prayers, or however you say it. Okay, you leave the confessional, and uh, is there any plan that you are thinking to implement to add 10 more minutes or to make space for the relationship with God? How is this wound gonna heal? When it comes to your personal life, when you have issues with uh, substances, as I just uh, mentioned earlier, well, are you going to continue with, uh, let's say, your friends? Or how about the computer and internet and other use of the media that makes you fall in sin and 
Okay, you stand up, but you're weak there. There is no healing of the wound. As a matter of fact, you're ripping the wound further on and the uh, bleeding is more profuse. So again, how about the healing of this wound? For example, falling in some sense, have you fasted? Have you uh, disconnected with some activities? Have you did some actions of repentance, asking that the grace of God may start penetrating inside and heal? Everybody knows that when it comes to the surgeries, it's not like upon getting out of the operating room, especially after a major surgery, you are back on a treadmill and running. You need a time of recovery. And oftentimes it's more painful, arduous and problematic than the actual surgery that you were unconscious. Uh, you were not even able to find out what was happening to you. Basically, the recovery is needed. And also, when it comes to our relationship with our brothers and sisters around. If you had a big fight, if you had a big argument, a quick sorry does not suffice. Something needs to happen. How about inviting a person out to a restaurant or to uh, bring him a gift or to have a conversation and a walk with him? How about a heart-to-heart -heart cleansing of that wound? I remember some time ago there was a major issue in one of my parishes and uh, I said to one of those perpetrators or people involved in uh, a major turmoil, okay, you confessed. I would like you to go to talk to that person about that, to engage in mending the relationship. And you know what that individual told me? No way, never. I will never talk to her. I will never talk to him. Absolutely. I want to be forgiven by God, but I'm done with that. Brothers and sisters, it doesn't work like that. There is not even an intention to mend the relationship, to reach out, to humble one's own self, to look at the other person with different eyes. Basically, today's task will be to look at those three areas and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us how we can heal with the power of His grace, the wound that still is bleeding upon the removal of the arrow. God bless you, brothers and sisters, as we continue our Lenten journey with the saints.